Aloha everyone. This is July 22nd through 29th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. Let's get into it. We pick back up on July 22nd, back down at the ocean entry. The ocean entry has evolved over the past couple weeks as the breakout on the backside of Green Mountain made a new ocean entry on the Poiki side or the eastern side of the previous lava flow. And that has been expanding further and further to the southeast. It made entry around the Ahalanui area and is now around 500 meters from the Poiki boat ramp and encroaching upon it more and more each day. In this shot from Mick Calber, we see just how close that leading edge of the lava flow is getting to the Poiki boat ramp. It's already entered into the bay on the northern side and into the bold surf spot, advancing towards the shack surf spot and then further towards the boat ramp itself. There's also this leading edge of sand that is advancing further to the south than the lava flow itself. And as of right now, the Poiki boat ramp itself is still operable. You can still take a boat in and out of there. There's no blockage happening. As you can see, it's very similar to what it was prior to the flow as of this point. Here we see a sandbar that is formed inside what was the bowl surf spot, advancing alongside the leading lava flow, moving further and further towards Poiki boat ramp. This sandbar is very volatile. It's the result of the interaction between the hot lava and the cold ocean water. It's mostly glass fragments and little rocks, but it creates a essentially a beach, so to speak. Uh, one of these black sand beaches that is so common alongside the ocean entry from Kilauea. So further up slope, not much has really changed. The eruption remains focused at Fisher 8 with a little bit of Strombolian activity at Fisher 22. The activity at Fisher 8, as we can see in this thermal map produced by the USGS, is contained to lava channels most of the time with the exception of the surges following the collapse events which overtop the channel walls. We jump back up to the summit of Kilauea to look at one of these collapse events. At this point in the eruption, the collapse events have elongated the interval between each one to the point of about 50 hours. Compare that to the height of the eruption back in June when each collapse was taking place on a 24 hour, 28 hour schedule. So we're getting longer each time. And that caldera is totally different. It's been transformed throughout this event. Each one of these collapses drops down the caldera 10, 12 meters or more in the centralized spot and the ripples of that change percolate outwards. We step forward to the morning of July 25th and we see that bleeding edge back down at the ocean entry, just how much it has advanced towards the Poiki boat ramp. Bowles is gone, the shack surf spot's gone, and it's starting to threaten even more areas as it wraps around that small little point. The county of Hawaii, previously to the eruption, probably four or five years before, had invested a bunch of money in order to make the area that has just been covered into a more usable area, including many benches, gazebos, paved paths, all gone. Um, and the lava hasn't stopped. We, we're still wondering if it's only a matter of time until the entire boat ramp, first bay, second bay are covered as well. Here we take another look at a thermal map produced by the USGS, this one from July 25th. And in it, we see that even though the leading edge of that ocean entry is advancing significantly towards Poiki, the primary entry point is still around the Aha Anui area. It's able to expand the flanks and expand that lava delta without re-delegating or re-channeling or diverting that lava channel as it's feeding the ocean entry. Back up slope at the eruption site, not much has really changed. We do have the volatility introduced from the surges as well as the pulses continuing, but that lava is staying primarily confined to the lava channel with a few minor overflow exceptions. It hasn't been destroying homes in Leilani Estates or doing anything outside of the activity that's been taking place at Poiki for the past couple of days here. We take a look at the thermal map from July 27th and there's really not much that has changed here. The ocean entry is still focused around the Aha Anui area, and that leading edge is still advancing closer and closer to the Poe Bow Ramp. On the morning of July 28th, we get some bad news. There is a fire that has started inside the Kipuka. 
the large kapuka that has been isolated by the lava flows, but still has dozens of homes still standing within it. This fire starts to quickly move up slope. Now, the weird thing about it was that it was not reported by the authorities, at least not until many people online started posting undeniable evidence that the fire was happening was the admission finally made and nothing was done as a result this fire was left to burn out there was no attempt to do helicopter drops of water or any type of containment measures the fire was left to do whatever the fire wanted to do it would eventually be put out that night by the trade winds and the rains that come associated with them but that wasn't before maybe a half dozen or more homes were lost on the morning of July 29th, we rejoin Mick Calver, and he is surveying some of the damages by this fire. We see just how hit or miss it was. Certain areas get burnt, certain areas are left untouched, and this rings true for the homes that end up being destroyed and the ones that are left behind as well. Mick also goes back down to Poiki, where we see that that leading edge that has been threatening the Poiki boat ramp is continuing its advance. It's slowed though, it's not advancing, quite as quickly as it was over the previous days. It's now roughly 100 meters from the boat ramp itself. We wrap up July 29th with a look at the thermal map produced by the USGS. In it, we see that the lava channel and the eruption site at Fisher 8 is mostly unchanged. While the lava delta has some volatility to it, the primary ocean entry is still around the Ajo and Nui area. That leading edge that has been advancing towards Poiki is slowly starting to wrap around that small point that Poiki boat ramp is centered on. And that'll do it for July 22nd through July 29th of the 2018 eruption. In this episode, we saw as the ocean entry continued its advancement towards the Poiki boat ramp, as well as a fire started by an overflow inside the Kapuka by Highway 132. In the last episode, I want to make a little bit of a clarification. One of the clips that was used in it when we were talking specifically about the explosion on the tour boat, the littoral explosion that caused injuries, one of those clips, the clip that was from Kaiko Marzo's boat, was from slightly later that same day. The event took place in the darkness. The video from Kaiko Marzo's boat is of the same area, a similar explosion, but slightly later that morning. Until next time. Aloha.